You're probably wondering if I'm being stung, and definitely the answer is yes. I'm getting stung on my jeans. Hey everybody, David Burns here. Today I've got some cool things planned. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. It's the day after Christmas. Hope you had a good holiday season. It's really a phenomenal day. It's a meteorological phenomenon for Central Illinois to have this kind of good weather <laughs> this many days in a row. So back in the hives again to do another video. Last week I told you about the hive that I added the special prototype winter bee kind board with an exceptional amount of protein added to the candy. And I looked in there the other day and there was not a single bee on the winter bee kind. In fact, there wasn't any bees in the top deep at all. I kind of did a little more exploration and I found out that the bees were down in the bottom of the bottom deep, which is pretty, I guess, uh, common when the, this hive was, if you remember, this was a hive that we moved from the colder north side of the building where they were tightly clustered over here to the south side of the building where the sun hits them and they warm up and fly more. So over there, they were kind of staying clustered for winter. They weren't really active getting up and eating all that honey up. And again, like I told you in my last video, and if you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. Bees that are in the sun that are flying a lot in the wintertime are going to eat a lot of food. You got to keep them well fed. Anyway, today I thought, what the heck? Let's open this hive up. That's why I'm going to wear my suit, my gloves, <laughs> everything I can find. Because normally when bees are being inspected during the summertime, the older bees are out foraging, flying, and you're left with bees that are more young, uh, more of a nurse bee type honey bee in the hive, and they're not as defensive. But today, everybody's home, right? And I'm going to really be prepared with my gloves and my suit. I do not recommend that you do this. I don't think you should ever open a hive up and, and move any frames around unless the temperature is 60 degrees or higher. Now I'm doing it today just for the video. I may lift a frame of honey up, uh, you know, a frame that doesn't have maybe just bee bread or pollen, I may pull that up. But I'm not gonna pull any frames up that are uh, loaded with especially pupa. Now if I do, I'll just do it, you know, just, just for like five seconds or something just to show you and put it back down and that won't hurt the bees at all. So I, I had to be careful that way. The reason I don't want you to do this, two things can happen that are bad. If you start looking into your hives in the wintertime, like I'm doing, I'm just doing it for an experiment to see what winter bees look like. And it's not a bad day today. But if you do it, two things can happen that are bad. Number one, the worst thing possible, you can kill your queen. Well, you say, I'm not gonna kill my queen. How could I do that? Well, you're gonna be moving frames around. You can smash her. You're gonna be taking the top deep off. Eventually, you're gonna have to put the top deep back on the bottom deep, and there's always bees on the edges. And, and so the queen may not be uh, on brood this time of year. She may be walking a little more, and she may walk up on that top deep box. You may not see her, smash, she's gone. If you kill your queen now in December, uh, in Illinois, I can't get another queen until way into probably April. By that time, the hive is really low on population and they'll probably perish because all winter long, the queen is laying a small amount of brood. And in my case, when I feed them a large amount of brood, I can't lose that queen. So that's why it's really chancy to open up a hive and start moving frames around when there's no opportunity for you to ever replace this queen if you kill her in the winter time. And they won't do it either, right? Because there's no drones to mate with the queen. So they're not going to replace her either. They won't have any eggs. It's too late. It's, it's a bad scenario. <laughs> the other reason it's not good uh, to inspect hives is um, because you break the propolis seal. That, that's where the boxes are sealed together with propolis or propolis. And so you can't reseal that usually. Um, it may reseal today. It's, it's not bad. 40 in the sun, it could actually reseal again. Um, but there's just a lot of scenarios like that that can go wrong if you inspect a hive in the wintertime. And again, you don't want to kill any brood. Uh, pupae is real sensitive to temperature. They need to be kept about 92.5 degrees. And so when you begin to expose them to cooler temperatures, that it actually can kill the developing brood. And so those are a bunch of reasons why you shouldn't do this. But anyway, this is a hive that I promised that we would monitor, see what's going on. Also, get this, all these other hives here are, are just 
eating so much of these winter bee kinds that I'm putting on, and they're all up at the top. They've been at the top wanting food for a long time because as you saw, that hive there ate through their super, they emptied it, and I had to put a winter bee kind on to kind of save them. Um, but this one special hive that was in the shade over there that I brought back, they're not very high up in the end of their hive yet. And so we're gonna take a look and see, you know, why is that? Why is this a unique little hive? What's going on? And we'll just monitor this hive all winter long. She may die on us. I don't know what's going on. I do know it was a hive that I used for, to raise queens out of. I wasn't using it to raise honey that much. In fact, it never had a honey super. It was always just two deeps all summer long. So we'll take a peek in there, take a look and uh, see what's going on. Before we get started though, I need to work on this smoker. And that means that this hive is gonna be pretty defensive, probably. I'm expecting that. I gotta get this smoker going. Okay, so I have other videos on how to light a smoker, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in here now. I know some of you are watching this for the first time as a, a prospective beekeeper or maybe a, a brand new beekeeper. And so we'll just go through the basics of lighting a smoker. I always start with something like newspaper and I'll start my fire in the bottom of my smoker with something like a uh, newspaper that burns really easily. That you've got to get a fire started down on the bottom of your smoker before you add smoker fuel. And in this case, it's going to be newspaper. And so I just keep pumping the daylights out of it like this, try to get a flame going. I have two uh, things that I want to show you that I use as smoker fuel burlap. I, I drink a lot of coffee. I buy green coffee beans and I roast my own beans and grind them myself. And I get these burlap bags that they don't have any pesticides or insecticides. I also cut up my old blue jeans that are 100% cotton, what I'm putting in now. And don't push it down really tight or else it will just uh, put the fire out, right? While you got the flames going off of your newsprint, you wanna go ahead and get the flames to start catching the blue jean material the denim on fire like this and uh, you gotta have strong thumb muscles <laughs> it works out it's a workout on your forearms and uh, once you kind of see that the denim material is lighting up then like it is now then you can add more denim material or your burlap whatever your smoker fuel is some of you might want to use pine needles because you live in a, a pine forest and that's fine i've used a lot of pine needles they make uh they make a good smoke they burn really quickly. Kind of have to compress them together once you get your fire going. I'm probably not going to use my burlap since my, that's a pretty color flame. Do you see that kind of purple? I hope that shows up on the video. Uh, maybe it's gone now, but it was beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right. Most beekeepers don't have hair on their fingers anymore because we singe it off with flames. <laughs> yeah, you see that purple flame? That's kind of cool, isn't it? Last one. I want a lot of smoke because I don't know how long I'll be in there and what will happen. And I want this thing to be still running good a little while longer. Anyway, that's how you light a smoker. You just start putting the fuel in like that from a fire that really went well on the bottom. Probably some of you that have frustration with your smoker going out, you don't pump it as much as I'm doing here and you don't get a good solid fire going like this. And then you don't want to pack it. See, I'm not going to pack it at all. Like pack it down to the bottom. Instead, I'm just gonna close the lid and uh, we should really be good to go. Oh yeah, whoa, <laughs> now that's, that's a smoker, right? <laughs> Got our smoker going. I'm gonna show you the winter be kind with the excessive amount of protein. We won't find hardly any bees on it, like I said. And we don't see any bees right here on top. So they're all either at the, kind of like at the bottom of this deep and are at the, uh, into the lower deep box. And when I smoke them, I can hear them buzzing loudly. I'm gonna break the two uh, deep boxes apart and smoke between the middle. I'm gonna lift this up and we'll see what it looks like. It's way too heavy to move. It's uh, totally full of honey. And that's why I'm having trouble lifting it. 
And I think it's still stuck in the front. Let me free up the front. Wow. There we go. Oh, that was so... Okay, the cluster, the cluster is in both the deep and uh, the deep, the bottom deep and the top deep. Now this is a smaller cluster, as you can see here. So they're partially in the bottom deep, partially in the top deep, but it, it is a small group of bees. It's a small cluster. We're going to work kind of fast because we don't want to keep this open too long. But I just want to start moving a few frames just to show you what's going on. And you can see why it's not fun working bees in the winter time. All right, some of them are uh, kind of flying all around me. This is like something you would never see a video on because no one opens up a hive in the wintertime like this. So you just, you're just not going to see a video like this. And even I shouldn't be in here, but we're doing it anyway, right? So the frame that I want to look at really quick is the one, obviously, that I'm going for in the middle. Get some smoke on those bees. All right, here we go. Because I would suspect, since this frame in the middle um, is the one that the is in the middle of the cluster, that it would be the one that probably has some brood and queen on it. So we're going to lift it up just as fast as we can to show you, and then put it back down. Okay, so you you can see here what winter bees look like. There's the queen. I'll try to point her out in the video. So they do have a small amount of brood. They're going back in. All right. I'm gonna move this back over in position. This frame was about right there. We've got a lot of honey on that frame. There's a small high beetle that was alive uh, a small hay beetle actually overwinters in the winter cluster of bees. And this hive did have a beetle problem last year. All right, good. Looks good. I'm going to tighten it up. No, that's good. And then I'm going to put my other frame back in on the edge that they never really got to. Like I said, this was a smaller colony. And they, they've got their work cut out in surviving because... Even though we might give them enough food, they're so small that they may not be able to generate the heat that they need to survive the winter. All right. Queens in the bottom. Let's put this very heavy deep back on as bees continue. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the heaviest thing I've ever lifted. All right, good. Okay, whew, wowzers. That was heavy. All right, I want to show you another thing before we uh, finish the video. I want to take these beetle traps off, and I want to work. I want to show you what the cluster looks like. Some of the frames in this top deep. The cluster is taking up the bottom deep and the top deep a little bit. So we want to look at what this looks like. Let me get this uh, beetle blaster off. Oh, look at all the beetles under there! Holy cow! Wow, they're dead. All these beetles under the trap are dead. Wow, and this trap is, it doesn't, this trap doesn't have any oil in it, but look at the beetles that are dead in it. I guess the oil either kind of evaporated out. I don't know. Or the oil spilt out? I don't know. I don't think it would have spilt out. I'll have to ask all my beetle friends in the south that are beekeepers uh, to explain why a beetle trap 
uh, doesn't have any oil in it like that. Look at that, the oil is gone. There's a little oil in it, but there's just a little oil in the bottom. Most of the oil is gone. I'm definitely gonna have to get to the bottom of that mystery. And look at the dead beetles under there. See all those dead beetles under there? Wow, they were under the trap. That's when you take a trap off. You want to smash the uh, edges of the trap because there are beetles hiding under the edge. But those are, those are just frozen. They're frozen out up here at the top. Okay, so back to business. Uh, we're not really hurting the hive at all now because the bees heat each other in close proximity to one another. And so by, by taking a frame out, the, beetles, or the bees are staying really warm down by the cluster. All right, whew, we got her. I don't think there's any bees on this one because we're far enough over toward the wall that I don't think the bees were this far over. Whew. This is why it's so heavy. This is just one frame of solid capped over honey. As you can see, it's just capped over honey. So you get 10 frames like that, it's a lot of weight. Now we should be able to do like we do in the summertime is scoot frames over like this until we get to where the bees have started to get on to the bottom of these frames that are in the top deep. Namely, it's gonna be this one right here. All right, let's use a little smoke. The queen is down in our bottom deep, so we're not gonna injure her she looked really good she was an unmarked queen so let's see what the bees are doing on the bottom of this frame they're just hanging out eating some honey so most of the bees are down in the bottom deep but you can see how they are utilizing the honey in this top deep Let's look at one more. I'm telling you, this is crazy to be able to do this in the winter time. And I don't recommend you do it. Okay, bees are just walking around on some frames of honey up here. There's a beetle. Do you see the beetle walking around in the center there? Look at the bees. It's like, hey, what are you doing in our hive, Mr. Beetle? Hope it's a Mr. Beetle, not a Mrs. Beetle. Same thing. I got one more frame to show you. <sighs> Bees are sort of going after my face. A few of them, not many. Okay, same things. Bees are just kind of scattered onto the frame of honey, but look on this side. This is where they're eating more. You can see I'm just taking advantage. No brood up here. They're just opening up these cap cells and eating the honey for winter all right so you would think that this hive has a really good chance to make it with uh, 20 frames capped over of honey but i assure you the problem here is going to be population when we start getting down to sub-zero temperatures here in illinois windy conditions uh, this hive is really going to be put to the test. And so some of you might be thinking, why can't, why did that hive die? It had all these frames of, of honey in it and they just, they died. It's because those bees are the only thing making heat. And so you need about 40,000 bees in a northern hive like this to make it through winter. This doesn't look like maybe 20,000 at best. So they're half of what they should be. And so they may not make it because even if I put a winter bee kind on here, um, they have enough food. They just don't have enough bees. That's the challenge of this hive here. Like I said, I was using it for raising some queens. So they never really overpopulated. I kept selling the queens out of there. So I'll put this back together and I'll talk to you about some plans that I have for this hive. 
Okay, so what I want to tell you about a hive like that is that they're small in number. Now, some of you may experience this uh, uh, in your hives too, especially if you had a queen issue uh, late summer or sometime in the fall when the populations began to drop because you couldn't get the hive queen right, for example. Maybe you lost your queen and you don't know it and or you didn't know it and you didn't have time to replace one. Maybe it took them forever to get another queen going on their own. Whatever reason, if populations start to fail in the fall, then a hive goes into winter very small like this one. Now, obviously, they were large at one time or had a large foraging force. They had a lot of uh, honey in there. And uh, so what we're going to do, what my plan is, is to make sure that this hive is going to get wrapped because there's not enough bees in there to stay warm. There's only, in my estimation, about maybe somewhere between 10 and 20,000 bees. I believe a, a colony needs about 40,000 bees to stay warm. And uh, so, but we'll try it. We'll, uh, we'll do some work on this hive and I'll, I'm, we're going to follow it together. Right now, I'd say it's probably got a 40% chance of surviving the winter because of its size. They've got plenty of honey, right? They've got plenty of um, frames of honey above them. I don't see a lot of bee bread. I don't see a lot of protein. I'm worried about that. Ultimately, what I want to do is get this hive down into one deep where I can put that winter bee kind with the excessive amount of protein uh, on the top. So maybe in the next video, if we get another break in the weather, maybe I'll go ahead and uh, brush those bees off the top deep, harvest the honey, and then uh, put the winter bee kind right on top of that smaller cluster. Now, the reason that I would do that is because it would consolidate the space. Theoretically, the cluster could be tighter uh, just in a single deep than spread out in two deeps, and uh, they could stay a little warmer, but they definitely need wrapped. Uh, they're in a good place out of the, the north wind's not going to hit them, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed, but uh, It'll be fun. This is like a soap opera. We can keep following this little hive all through winter and uh, see if she makes it. Well, again, thanks for watching my YouTube videos. It means a lot to me. I like uh, being inspired by your comments and liking the videos down below. So please like and please subscribe over in the corner. Send this to your friends and ask them to subscribe as well. I'll see you next time.